I don't know where you are in life right now or where it is you want to go. But if you are a curious soul like me, I know this about you. You are searching for greatness in life. You desire financial freedom. And you ask yourself daily how you can master success in business without wasting years of your life. On this show, we are going to interview all the leading experts and influencers in the fields of marketing, mindset, and sales to expose all the tips and tricks you need to accelerate your business and amplify your success. My name is Reem Kharbat, and this is the Entrepreneur Accelerator. Welcome everyone to a new episode of the Entrepreneur Accelerator. This is your host, Reem Kharbat. Um, and if you remember, uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking with my friend, Nicholas Dodge. By the way, every time I say your name, I mention it, Nicholas Cage, to myself. And then I, okay. Nicholas, uh, oh, no, yeah. no. <laughs> Nicholas Dodge, not Nicholas Cage. <laughs> so welcome back to the Entrepreneur Accelerator. Guys, this is uh, one of the people who really, really inspired me um, when I first joined the ClickFunnels space and uh, the whole online space. And when I read his story, like I felt I had this connection and I felt that I really need to know this guy more. So uh, if you get the chance, if you did not get the chance to hear the previous episode of the launch uh, um, of our eight um, episodes launch, uh, please go back and make sure to listen to it. And um, uh, today we're going to um, talk more about his work, about what he's um, specialized in. So get ready. If you're in, this, in the ClickFunnels space, then I'm sure that you're going to have a lot of notes to write down. So get ready and grab a pen and a paper and I'll sit back and listen to him. But uh, first, let me say thank you so much again for being here in the show. Uh, I always enjoy talking to you. So let's hope that this episode is going to be as exciting as, as the previous one. And uh, oh, I hope that you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here, Nicholas. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be an awesome interview. I'm so happy that you bring me in here. Uh, this is going to be really cool and a lot of actionable takeaways inside of this. Yes. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope you guys Amazing. are ready. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, so before before we get into uh, the technicalities, which is like might not be my uh, uh, space of uh, expertise. So I'm going to just, you know, sit back and, and, and listen. But what yeah. I want to know First, what makes um, what you're doing, so now you're coaching uh, entrepreneurs or you're coaching people on how to create funnels, how to launch mm -hmm. funnels that generate leads and loyal customers that get back over and over to you uh, yeah. and without wasting thousands of dollars or years of testing, because I know that you need to, um, every time you want to launch a funnel, it's better if you can create different um, what, what do they call it? Like different um, types for testing to test which one is going to be like the best funnel for you, right? Or is yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what what did you figure out? How did you come up with your um, a program or with your approach, and what makes it different than the others? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what's really exciting is and kind of um, kind of mind boggling to me. Is that so you, you could probably attest to this too um, when you're first trying to like start a business right what's the first question that comes to mind it's typically what product am I gonna create what yeah. am I gonna sell right um, and we go out there and we start creating these products or, or I, we call them offers um, or, or I'll refer to them as offers inside of here because there's there's a little bit different of a technicality between the two and we'll likely get into that but um, getting back on topic so instead of focusing on like what product am I going to create? What am I going to sell? Um, typically that leads to you spending a bunch of time and money creating something and then launching it to crickets because you find out that nobody's interested in what you built or you can't figure out exactly uh, what market is going to resonate best with what you built. Um, and that's because you're going into it with the approach of what to create and sell uh, when you should really take a step back and figure out um, who am I trying to serve, right? So 
my whole approach, um, and, and which actually we cover in my program, uh, but we'll walk through it here. So first and foremost, I actually recommend that you take, um, I would say a day at most uh, to go through this process. So typically what, what I did was I make two columns on my paper. So I, I draw a line down the middle and on the left-hand side, I'm writing down everything that I'm passionate about, right? So like literally I'm not censoring anything. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's sales funnels or mindset, and then I'll throw in like basketball and singing and playing guitar, like everything that I'm passionate about, um, but not necessarily good at. I can't play the guitar, I'm terrible. <laughs> but, uh, um, but, but anyways, um, so I'll get better. Uh, but anyways, so like I'm jot jotting down all my passions and then on the right-hand side, I'm thinking about all of my experiences, right? So if you guys listen to the pre-launch uh, episode, um, you know, I talked about how I was depressed and suicidal. I don't think I talked about this in the launch episode, but I was talking about, or, or rather I built, um, man, like 75 different funnels that never worked. Like it's wow. insane. You guys, you, you would laugh at how many funnels there were that I had built. Um, and I'm writing down all of my experiences, you know, uh, attending my first networking event and being so scared that I was not able to harness and really uh, make the best connections. And so I'm writing down everything that I'm that that I have an experience in. Um, and then once I have these two lists, uh, the next step is to actually start drawing arrows and pairing where your passions and your experiences align. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, it was um, my passion for coaching entrepreneurs on how to launch their first successful funnels and my experience with building 75 funnels that never worked, right? Um, mm. And I'm doing this for everything. So I'm writing down, uh, so my passion for perhaps, um, again, like we'll say helping entrepreneurs start their business and then my experience with publishing a book, right? Mm. Or mm -hmm. my passion for um, you know, personal development, and then my experience with being suicidal and depressed, right? So I'm making all of these comparisons. And what you're doing with this process is you're actually brainstorming a bunch of concrete ideas for your business, right? Um, yeah. And this is where you're going to really start developing some crystal clear um, foundations and messaging um, for the offer that you're actually going to create and the funnel that you're going to launch, right? So instead of thinking about what product you're going to sell, what offer you're going to create, what the funnel is going to look like, um, you have to go kind of back to the drawing board and figure out the exact audience that you're going to serve. And this is kind of the process that I went through because instead of trying to think and like pull out of this like imaginary cloud of all these ideas that you can pursue, you're writing them all down on like paper and you can see them, you can visualize them. Um, and it's okay. Like usually when I was doing this process, um, the first time I had like 30 different ideas. All right. A ton of ideas of businesses mm -hmm. I can pursue. Um, and something to note here is that, uh, if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to be focused. Okay. So that leads to the next step here is to, once you have all these different ideas for your business, uh, to narrow them down to your top three. All right. Mm -hmm. And then once you have your top three, um, hopefully I'm not going too fast, but once you weigh it down to the top three, you're going to start weighing the pros and cons of each idea. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll just take my, my free course that I had launched, for example, because we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, so for example, um, the pros of my passions and experiences with coaching other entrepreneurs on their funnels is that, um, you know, they likely already are in this space and they know they want to have a business. So that's step number one is that they're obviously motivated and they're inspired to have their own business. That's step yeah. number one. That's a major pro. Um, but some of the cons perhaps are that maybe they don't have enough time or money to devote to their business because since they haven't been successful in the past, they have a job that sucks up a lot of their time or they don't have a lot of money because they've invested it in something that hasn't worked worked. Okay. Uh, a con could be that my audience doesn't even know what funnels are. Right. So I'm weighing the pros and cons of each idea. And then once I do that, um, the last step is to just pick one. Um, now there's no like concrete, like step-by-step -step approach to narrowing it down to one idea. Uh, all I can really say is that just deep down, you're really going to know what you're most passionate and excited about, uh, what fires you up the most. Right. Um, and so you, you just hone in on that one idea and something I want to uh, mention here is that, uh, once you have this idea, so you have your concrete idea for your business, this is what you're going to start building your offers around. Um, something to mention here is that, uh, since I, we narrowed it down to one idea, 
Like, so I, I had 30 ideas. The, the other 29 that I left out, like they're not something to just forget about, right? Like I yeah. mentioned, you have to stay focused, but focus on scale, uh, like starting and building and scaling the, the one idea that you have. And then once you have that running and functioning, then you can venture into these other ideas that you've brainstormed. Right. So for me right now, I'm teaching people about funnels, but I eventually want to coach people on how to author a book and then open up their own, like what we'll say, like supplement company. Like that's something I want to do is have my own health mm. supplements. Right. Mm. Um, so that I went on a bit of a tangent there, but that's really step number one is to figure out the exact uh, market that you're going to serve. And there's no better way to do that than by figuring out what you're most passionate and experienced in. Okay. Can I just um, comment in here? Because yeah. Uh, from different people, everybody is saying, like marketing wise, they're saying that you need to start with the who, as you said, who you want yeah. to serve and not with the what. You need to start mm -hmm. by thinking, who is your dream client? Who do you want to work with? And it makes sense to me because uh, and this is one of the mistakes that I have done personally. Okay. I thought that with my experience mm -hmm. yeah. and with, you know, coming from, a small country and uh, coming from a place where women did not have, uh, let's say, all the privileges and the freedom to think and dream and travel and do everything, mm -hmm. not unlike the uh, how it is yeah. in the US or in Europe. So I thought that I can help such women who are moms, who are uh, women um, who wanted to create a business and, but they, maybe they did not get the chance to start or have a job or a business before. And I thought about them. Okay. So they were my who, but later yeah. on you would realize that they doesn't want, they don't want it. It's not something that they want. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? It's that, um, yeah, they did not want to create, let's say, a business. They don't want to live the dreams. They they don't want to um, uh, have a, a different life or the way that I want. And I found that this is not what I really want to work with. I want to work mm -hmm. with people who are passionate, people who are action takers, people who are dreamers, people who are willing, you know, they love self-development. They want to grow more and to do more. My question here mm -hmm. is... With your steps, by creating down or by making a list that is, mm -hmm. you know, comparing your passion and your expertise and coming up with ideas, how do yeah. you align that with your who? Because you're coming up with ideas and expertise that are related to you, that you think that you're good at, that you think that they are good products. But mm -hmm. how would you know that it's aligned with the who that you want to work with? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a fantastic question. You are like the vision of your ideal client. Um, so it, it just so happens to be this way and not a hundred percent of the time. But what I found is that when you really, um, you, you figure out what you're most passionate and experienced in, uh, two things. Number one is that you find that a lot of the problems and challenges that you, challenges that you faced, like on your own journey to discovering this, uh, there's other people out there that are struggling with it. Right. Um, yes. so you, you know, you know, for me, um, my biggest problem was figuring out how to land my first paying customers in, in their sales funnels. Right. Um, and so I kind of realized that obviously, you know, there's a lot of other people out there that are struggling with this. So that that's number one. Um, and then number two, which actually kind of leads me to, uh, the, the next like step in this process that I usually go through is we start figuring out like all of your clients, uh, your, your, your dream clients, um, demographics and psychographics. So, um, you know, their fears, their objections, uh, their goals, their desires. And once you really figure out what they're most like motivated by and inspired by, that's when you can align these ideas with the who. Um, because until you really figure out the things that they fear the most, uh, the things that they struggle with the most, uh, the things that they desire the most, like what they're striving to, uh, for in their business, right? Uh, until you really figure that out, then there's no way to really align this idea with the market that you're trying to serve because you just don't have a clear understanding of what they actually want and need. Um, 
So the idea alone isn't enough. Um, and you kind of, like I said, preluded to that second step I usually go through is uh, I figure out like everything I need to know about my dream customer. Uh, and again, it typically comes back to something that you likely experienced, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that, that, that's really the best way to summarize it is uh, yeah. really figuring out exactly uh, what your audience looks like. Um, and then just crafting your messaging to those fears, those challenges, those objections, and then the goals, desires, the things that they really want. Awesome. So what is the secret that you're using to make sure that you're generating leads, but not just any leads, leads of customers who are going to come back over and over to you? Because, you know, most of the funnels or most of the people creating funnels, they just care about landing at least the first sale. Okay. Yeah. And they don't care about customers after, like they don't mm -hmm. care if the customer is going back to, is going to come back to you to purchase again from you. Do you create, is it just one offer that you give them or you keep, or do you keep giving them continuous offers to come back to you? Like, how do you make sure that you're having loyal customers coming back over and over to you? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I would say, so, so there's a lot that I have to uh, kind of discuss here. Um, so before we really get into the offer, um, so, so like 90% of the work is figuring out like who your audience is and how to, how to resonate with them. Mm -hmm. um, so really the last step to that process is, is what I do is I join the Facebook groups that my audience is a part of. Um, and I'm just interacting with them, right? So I'm at answering their questions. I'm adding value, stuff like that. And that's really what's going to like put this, you know, present. It's going to put the bow tie on this present or the icing on the cake. Yeah. Um, because that's really the last step is to figure out uh, and, and kind of like interact with your audience because that's when you're going to learn the most about them. Um, you know, you can sit back and you can think all you want, but you never really know your customer until you're interacting with them. Um, so I'm always in Facebook groups. I'm, I'm adding value. I'm ask, answering their questions. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just learning as much about my customer as possible. And then to answer your question, this is really cool. Um, so you, you can tell I get like fired up about this, which, you know, like I said, that's how, you know, like, this is what you want to do. Yeah. Um, so anyways, my first goal is to generate a lead out of my audience or, or out of my potential audience we'll say, mm -hmm. uh, because they're not actually a client at this point. They're still just like this, this pool that your audience is like gathering in, um, you know, on Facebook or wherever they're at. Um, but anyways, my first goal is to create a lead out of this audience, right? So what I think about is, so I sit back and I think, okay, I have my audience. What's the end goal that I want to help them reach, right? So for me, it was helping them land their first customers in their funnels, all right? So I have this end goal, like I want to help my customer, uh, I want to help my client land their first paying customers. So then I map out the entire journey um, that my client's going to have to go through to achieve that end desired result, right? So I start breaking it down. I'm like, okay, what do they have to do in order to land their first customer, all right? Well, they have to figure out who their market is, who they want to serve. Um, they have to figure out what their audience looks like. So again, those fears, those, uh, those desires, stuff like that. Um, so they have to really figure out their audience. Uh, then they have to go out and they have to create their offer. So I actually walk them through what I'm walking you through right now is I'm, I'm breaking yeah. it down into that step-by-step -step process. Um, and then essentially I just offer them what they need when they need it. Right. So for example, in my, uh, in my funnel, my lead gen offer is a three module course that shows you, uh, how to choose a winning business idea and launch your first funnel. Right. So for example, like that's step number one to me, that's step number one. They have to figure out who their audience is, how to create an offer that resonates with them and how to, how to launch a funnel. Um, so that, 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 that's like, well, technically that's the first three steps. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to that idea in a second here. Sure. Um, but anyway, so now, now that I help them achieve that, now that they've launched their funnel, what's the next thing that they need, right? What's this, the next thing that they either need or want to buy? All right. So I've generated, generated a lead with that free course, but now my next goal is to create a customer immediately out of that lead. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking about the next thing that they're going to need or want to buy. So for me, it was really showing them 
how to use the ClickFunnels software, right? So mm -hmm. uh, if you're an entrepreneur and you don't know what sales funnels are, then this is like a foreign concept to you. So I created a course that teaches you everything you need to know about sales funnels and how to set them up and optimize them uh, for leads and sales, right? And so that's step number two, or, or rather four in this case. Uh, and then step number five would be, so this is an upsell that I offer if they take me up on that essentially this would be the first sales page offer. So I offer them an upsell immediately after. So what's the next thing they need after they learn how to set up their funnels and optimize them so they're ready to launch? Well, they need traffic coming to the funnel, right? So I walk them through my organic marketing strategies for getting people into your funnels, okay? Yeah. Uh, so that's how I kind of like map it out and how I teach my clients to map it out is think of that end goal and then map out what that process looks like and then just offer um, offer these different pieces exactly when they need them, right? Because it wouldn't make sense for me to teach them how to send traffic to their uh, funnels if they don't even know what a funnel is, right? Yeah, or, yeah. or if they don't even have a funnel, if they don't even have a funnel set up. So I'm logically thinking about what, what makes the most sense to offer and when to offer it. And then I, and then I uh, map that out and then I literally just create it and, and give it to them. Um, and then something that I wanted to come back to here is that we covered a lot in my free course. Um, and this is a little bit off topic, but, um, my whole psychology is that you have to create something so irresistible for your audience that it physically like hurts you to give it away for free. True, and then you true. still, and then you still give it away for free. Right. Because nobody's going to opt in for like a PDF that shows you five, like, I I'm trying to like think of something random here. Um, nobody's going to opt in for like a, a PDF that you threw together in 30 minutes that like very briefly goes over how to launch a funnel, right? Where there's missing pieces and everything. Yeah. So I took my time. I recorded a video course showing you how to launch your first funnel and that's converting at 70%. All right. Um, and it would not be the case if I had just slapped together some like rinky dink PDF, um, and not put any effort into it. So you have to offer something like so irresistible that like it literally hurts you to like, it, it yeah. kills you to give it away for free and just do it. Just give it away for free. Uh, Cause that's, what's going to really help you start building your audience. That's absolutely awesome. Like seriously, and especially with today is black Friday, right? It is. Yeah. And, and we can see people like going crazy with all the offers and and I, i've seen so many crazy things and it's so true that if you want to um have like create if you want to create an offer it really has to hurt you deep inside that you're giving <laughs> all of this for free but uh, yeah. definitely it's it it should worth it if you want to create um, not just an offer if you want to create loyal customers and if you want to create the trust uh, with your customers, with your audience, you have mm -hmm. to make sure that your competition is irrelevant, you know, yeah, and exactly. that you're giving it like you're giving everything. And let's talk about something that I've always like, I'm hearing a lot. And I've discussed this with Blake Nuber as well, by the way. So we were talking about, you know, um, maybe offline entrepreneurs will not understand what we're talking about here. So this one is, this, uh, this episode is dedicated to the online ones, <laughs> but, um, but we've, we've been seeing a lot of, you know, people getting into the space of click funnels and like anyone just is, they're thinking that this is just a, you know, the, the sales funnel is just a software. And if you're good in doing the software or playing in the software, then you're definitely going to, uh, create like the one million dollar idea and and hit mm -hmm. the two comma club award and uh, you know but yeah the the other day i was listening also to um, russell brunson and steve larson and they were talking about that people do not get it they do not get the science behind uh the funnels and mm -hmm. even behind the emails that is sent to the customers you know uh, why yeah. why are we choosing these words why are we um choosing this sequence but as an entrepreneur i'm telling you this is sometimes overwhelming like mm -hmm. how why do i have to learn all of this and how can i tell who is creating the an ethical funnel from those who are just creating anything crappy, you know, just because they know how to use the funnel and then they're selling crappy products. Uh, okay. I, I talked about a lot of things in, in one question, but what I, what, what I was saying is that 
because people, they do not understand the psychology or they do not understand the art and science behind uh, sales funnels. Uh, and a lot of people are jumping into this space thinking that this is uh, the space where they are going to become millionaires because it's online and it's just, you know, $97 a month, you have access to uh, click funnels and then you can uh, just create funnels for as much as you want. How can we let's say as an as an audience forget forget about me as an entrepreneur as a as a customer how can i tell from the funnels how mm. can i tell that it, this is um an ethical good product compared yeah. to um a bad product because most of the times you can see really good um funnel with a crappy crappy product yeah. sometimes you see a crappy funnel but with an extremely uh, great product like how do we yeah. get uh, into differentiating or how how do you differentiate yourself when creating your own funnels yeah absolutely I think and this this kind of bashes on me as as an agency because I build funnels for my clients um, I think like the, the the funnel design like itself plays like 10% of a role in, in 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 an offer that actually converts and one that actually sells um, so for me, I think the best way to really differentiate yourself and it kind of, kind of comes back to what I already talked about is you're going to be able to tell, um, you know, the amount of effort, the amount of time and the amount of energy and resources that somebody devoted to creating something that's really going to help you out. Um, and, and you can kind of tell that in the offer itself, uh, but what you're really going to identify what's like the most ethical, um, I, I guess it would be in the messaging itself, right? Um, because that's what really sells an offer is if you can clearly identify um, what your audience is most uh, excited about um, and, and what resonates with them the most, um, then that's really where you're going to get, uh, you're, you're going to be able to leverage um, your unique selling point, in, in my opinion, is, um, you know, like, so for example, if I had no idea what my audience was struggling with, um, if I had no idea what they feared, um, if I had no clue what their deepest goals and desires were, then I, I could very well have a damn good offer, but it's not going to convert if I'm not striking those emotional chords. So, uh, and I guess there's a very good point in that in and of itself is that um, people don't buy logically. Like if they see a really good offer, they're not going to be like, okay, well, I have to buy that, right? Um, yeah. You know, they, they buy emotionally and justify that emotional purchasing decision with logic, right? And I'm sure you've heard that before. Emotionally invested in what you're offering, then the selling does itself. Um, so that might be a little bit off topic, but I, I think to answer your question, the, like the best way to differentiate yourself is to understand your customer on a molecular level. Like, like you have to know almost everything about your customer. Yeah. And then that's when you're going to be able to craft a really good messaging to back the offer and the funnel itself. And then all three pieces, when they're on point, work phenomenal. And so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, Nicholas, one last thing. If I want, if you want, if you can give an advice to entrepreneurs, starting entrepreneurs who are getting into the click funnel space or let's say the sales funnel space without just mentioning any company, just in, in general, yeah. if people are getting into the sales funnel space and they want to start, what advice would you give them in terms of technical, again, how to craft or how to produce the perfect funnel that converts? Like, we talked about to know everything about your uh, customers, to know everything about them and to know their pinpoints and to, we covered that. But is there anything mm -hmm. else that, let's say, that can be still kept as a secret? Is there like secrets how to convert, uh, how to make funnels convert or generate more yeah. leads? Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Um, two things come to mind immediately. Um, one pertains to offers and then one pertains to the funnel itself. So I'm not sure if this is going to be like a video podcast, but I'll do my best to like explain this. I love this example. I'll do my best to explain this. Like if you guys are just listening to the audio, I'm going so, to put it on YouTube. So if you want to show me something, we can explain oh, it to the, to the audience, uh, to the perfect. listeners. And at the same time, if you want to watch, you can check uh, the YouTube channel. 
Yeah, perfect. So this could be really cool. I love sharing this example. Perfect. So let's say that we have like Dan over here. And I say Dan because he's actually, he teaches Facebook ads, which is funny. I just saw him like last week. Uh, but let's say we have Dan over here and he has a Facebook ad guide that's going to show you how to create your first ad. All right. But then we have Lisa over here and she has a Facebook ad guide on how to create your first ad. Right. They're both selling it for $37. All right. So how are, how are they really going to differentiate themselves? All right. Well, Dan over here is going to knock his price down to 27. All right. And he's going to start selling more copies. And then Lisa over here is going to see that he knocked his price down to 27. So she's going to knock her price down to 27. And now like, it's just pretty much a race to the bottom as far as price point goes. Mm -hmm. So th th this is obviously pertaining to the offer itself here. So how do you create something that literally separates yourself from the competition and gives you the ability to charge whatever you want. And this is kind of the process and, and how to like create an offer. So we have this, this iPhone here, right? So let's say I'm gonna sell you this used iPhone 11 for $500, okay? Like you, you can go to Sprint or Verizon or wherever and buy a brand new one for probably $500. I'm not sure what they're selling for right now. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, let's say you can buy an, a brand new one for $500. All right. So you're obviously going to go to Sprint or Verizon or wherever and buy the brand new one. So how do I sell you this used iPhone um, and get you to buy from me? And, and how, what's going to like separate me from the, the other competition that's offering essentially the same product. Right. And so I'm going to craft this for the entrepreneurs because I'm pretty sure this is geared towards entrepreneurs. So on this iPhone, not only, only am I going to give you like th this iPhone, which is a $500 every single ebook uh, that, that I've purchased. I'm going to give you for free when you buy this iPhone. Right. And then every single audio book as well, because I know that, you know, some people, they don't like reading. So they, they like listening. They're, they're yes. what's an auditory yeah. learner or whatever. Um, so I'm going to give you every single audio book as well. I'm just going to throw that in when you buy this iPhone. Right. And these are like personal development books and business books and, and financing books and everything you could possibly imagine to help you become a better entrepreneur and run a more successful business. All right. But not only those ebooks or audio books, I want to give you even more value. Right. So when you buy this iPhone, I'm going to give you every single video course that I've invested in over the last five years. It's over $30,000 worth of programs. I'm going to throw that in for free when you buy this iPhone. Right. And so what I'm doing is I'm essentially building up the value with a bunch of different products. And I'm bundling them together to create a very enticing offer. All right. Now, something to mention here is that, um, you know, this is giving me the ability to charge whatever I want, right? This is, this is a used iPhone, but because I'm offering all of those other like products and I'm bundling them together, people are going to flock to me instead of yeah. Lisa over here, who's just selling her iPhone right now. Right. Um, so that's really what you got to do is figure out how to create an irresistible offer for your audience. Um, so that, that's really step number one. Um, and, and I know I'm kind of like going on a tangent here. I hope that's okay. Um, but anyways, so as you're adding these different products to create an enticing offer, um, each bonus has to psychologically, um, eliminate some fears and objections that your client has. So to mm. elaborate on that, um, I like let's that. say that I have this is perfect. So let, let, let's say that I have my, my sales funnel Academy. This is the course that teaches you about sales funnels. All right. Um, so what are some fears and objections that my client is going to have? Well, maybe they're going to have a fear and objection of building their funnel from scratch. You know, uh, I don't want to spend all that time and all that money trying to build a funnel from the ground up. Well, don't worry. I'm going to give you some funnel templates that all you have to do is just plug in your own messaging and your own offer. And you already have the funnel built. You don't have to worry about spending your time and money building a funnel from scratch. All right. So that's solving that fear, that objection. Um, so, oh, well now I have this funnel template. That's great. But what am I going to do now? Like, how do I, how do, what, what are the best marketing strategies? What's the best way to promote this funnel? What's this yada, yada, yada. All right. Well, don't worry. I've actually interviewed two comic club winners that have shared their strategies behind how they've generated a million dollars through their funnels. I'm going to give you those interviews for free. So you can figure out exactly what you need to do mm. to now use this funnel and generate your first seven figures. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm not just offering random bonuses. I'm kind of like psychologically yeah. knocking down each of these objections. Um, and that's kind of how I think about it. So hopefully that was a good value for you guys. That was there. awesome. Um, and then as far as the funnel goes, so, um, this I'll, I'll try to do uh, a really good job of explaining. So, um, for, for those of you that aren't watching the video, but let's say like you're sitting in front of your laptop right now, right? And you go to a funnel, 
Okay. So you know how, like, obviously if you want to learn more information, you have to scroll further down the page. Right. Um, so there's actually something that I want to accomplish immediately. Uh, three things actually, uh, they're, they're very quick uh, that I want to accomplish immediately uh, when my visitor or when my potential client reaches my funnel, they have to know what I'm offering, what it's going to do for them and how they can get it. All right. And we have to accomplish this above the fold is what we uh, usually say. I think I've learned that from Mehra Reza, who's actually generated $10 million through his funnels. Uh, you have to do this all above the fold. All right. And what that means is they have to figure out those three things before they scroll any further through the funnel. Okay. So what's being offered? Essentially, it's just, you know, hey, get free access to my new, like brand new course. All right. Boom. Oh, it's a video course. Nice. So that's what I'm getting access to. Uh, what's it going to do for me? So for, for my course, for example, uh, it's here's the number one winning formula to landing your first customers using sales funnels. Boom. All right. That's what it's going to do for me. I'm going to land my first customers using sales funnels with this free course. All right. So that's what's being offered, what it's going to do for me. Now, how can I get it? Uh, so usually this is just the simple call to action, right? So you have a button or something and then like an email opt-in field um, that shows them, Hey, just put your email in here, click the button and you're going to get instant access to this free course. All right. And that's super simple to do because all you have to do is just, it's essentially just like your hook, which is like, like a sub headline, like smaller fonts. Uh, then you have your headline. This is the, the biggest text on the page because this is uh, essentially the uh, really clarifying on the goals and desires that your customer has. So the number one formula to landing your first customer is using sales funnels. Boom. That's the headline. All right. And then simply below that headline, you know, I'll have like a little graphic that maybe shows a member's area so they know uh, once again, it's going to be a course. Um, and then right below that graphic, it's just an opt-in field with the call to action. Right. And then they get all of that critical information before scrolling further through the funnel. All right. Um, cause if there's one thing I've realized, which is, it's not a bad thing. Uh, and I, and I, I try to say this in a little bit more of a, a, a pleasing way, but people are lazy, right? I have to figure out how to yeah. say that in, in, in a better way, but people <laughs> are lazy. All right. And they, oh, they really only care about themselves. Uh, and that's good for you. Because you can really, if you can craft a killer message and show them that you're going to help them achieve like a really big goal of theirs uh, with, with an offer that you've created uh, and you make it as simple as possible for them to get access to it, then you pretty much won. Like that, that's how my, my funnel right now is converting at 70%. Like um, wow. I do all of that uh, immediately and I, I get all that critical information up, up across uh, before they have to essentially work to figure out more. So um, wow. those are really my two big takeaways. Um, and I hope that was helpful. Hopefully I did a good job of explaining that. That was awesome. I, I loved it. Like I'm telling you <laughs> for me, it's not <laughs> just like, uh, definitely, uh, um, building funnels is not just my game, but, uh, mm -hmm. you really gave me a very inspiring and good tips to make me think Beautiful. of, especially that I'm building my offer, um, currently. So this is really awesome. Uh, one Beautiful. last thing, one last thing. Yeah. In case there are offline entrepreneurs who are not familiar with sales funnels and uh, building funnels in general, uh, who yeah. are thinking of, because I, the other day we were talking about, me and my husband, we were talking about uh, uh, to build a website. One of our friends, mm -hmm. he's launching a, a company and he wants to build a, a website that he's going to pay tens of $10,000 maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm just for a website that has, sure. you know, it has nothing. It's just a website with the logo and description about the company and that's it. And we were just talking about that. It's sad because websites are just no more um, like it's dying. So I'm not sure. I don't want yeah. to say something that is not correct. What do you think in your mind, uh, in your opinion, uh, the difference or what is best a, a funnel mm -hmm or a website. And as I said, for those who, who are not online entrepreneurs, uh, yeah. how can you tell them, what do you tell them about uh, building funnels? Why is it important? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, the first question to answer that, like website or funnel, um, to be honest with you, I use both. Um, the first, so I use a funnel when I'm making one offer and I want them to get this one offer. Right. So for my free course, like the only thing to do in that funnel is to opt in for my free course. Like there's no links to go and look at the different resources I offer, the books I publish or anything else. Like 
if you want my free course, that's all you have to do is just enter your email. Boom. That's the only thing you do in this funnel. Um, but I also have my own website as well. Um, and so when people would just want to learn more information about me, uh, when they want to learn more about my story or they want to see the books that I've published or the courses I've created, uh, they want to essentially just learn more about me and my, and my brand that I'm building. That's when I'll send them to a website. So if they want to learn more about me, send them to a website. If I want to, I, if I want them to take one specific action then I send them to a funnel, does that make sense? Yes. 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 Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. That's and, and then for, for the offline businesses as well. So it applies, it, it applies the same. Um, so unfortunately I don't have so like, like too much experience with the local business, um, like, like environment, I, I guess you would say, um, my, my experience solely lies with online businesses, mm -hmm. but think about it. So, and this, this actually Russell Brunson walked us through in, um, in the OFA challenge. I took that challenge four different times. Like that's how much I loved it. Um, <laughs> but anyways, the, the uh, example that he walks you through. So let's say you go to uh, any store, we'll say Walmart, um, and you walk in the door, right? So th this is the way like a traditional website is laid out. There's, you know, your veggie section and your fruit section and your meats and your, and your uh, clothing and literally like everything. So you walk in the door and you're just like discombobulated. You don't even know yeah. where to go. Um, so the way a sales funnel could work for like a local business, and this is the example, like I said, that mm -hmm. Russell walked us through, is you typically have like a greeter immediately when you walk in Walmart. They're like, like if they're really good, they'll be like, hey, welcome to Walmart. Can I help you find anything, right? Yeah. And they'll literally point you in the direction of where you need to go. Um, and so the, kind of the example that, um, that, that Russell walked us through is like, and, and I wish people at Walmart did this. This would be crazy. Um, <laughs> but like, if you walked in the door, someone said, Hey, how are you? Welcome to Walmart. What can I help you find? Uh, well, Hey, um, we'll, we'll say, so Thanksgiving just happened. We'll say, um, you know, it's Thanksgiving. I'm actually looking to, um, to, to grill a Turkey. Can you show me where your grills are? Um, so he walks you over to the grills, right? So you got your grill. That's the first thing. Uh, so essentially this is like the free course in this opinion or, or in this position. Like that's the first thing that you need to successfully cook a Turkey. Um, so you got your grill. All right. Well, Hey, do, do, do you have the turkey yet? Did you already buy your turkey? Oh, mm -hmm. thank you for reminding me. I, I, I haven't bought my turkey yet. Oh, well, let me mm -hmm. show you where the turkeys are, right? So once they opt in for the grill, all right, now they're getting taken over to the turkeys. This is the sales page, all right? Um, all right, well, now you have your turkey. Do you have any like special seasonings you want or any spices or, Sauce. or um, you know, sauces that you want with this turkey? Uh, or, or do you want any like sides, like mashed potatoes or anything like that? Mm. Uh, oh, well, thank you for reminding me. You know, it'd be really cool to have like stuffing and mashed potatoes. All right, well, come here. Let me show you where the stuffing and the mashed potatoes are. Uh, so and you're walking them through like the process and showing them exactly what they need when they need it or, or what they want to buy when they want to buy it. Um, and so that's kind of like my best example. I wish like, like local businesses did that. Um, but that's like kind of how you take them through the process of a funnel using a local business. Yeah. Um, again, nobody does this. I think that's like a major, um, I think that could be majorly improved upon in a lot of local businesses, not just like Walmart, but, um, you know, again, I don't have a lot of experience with local businesses. So, um, but that, that's kind of like what, how, how it applies to like offer creation and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and how to like map out a funnel. You just show them what they need when they need it. Awesome. Loved it. Thank you so much. It was really brilliant. And uh, uh, one more time for people to know more about you uh, and yeah. to know more about your course. Uh, and I know that you're giving a free course, right? Yeah, exactly. So can you just give us or tell us uh, a little bit more about it and where can people find it? Yeah, um, absolutely. So we kind of referenced it a lot inside of this pod or inside of this I podcast know. episode. Um, but yeah, so essentially it's a free course and it shows you how to land your first customers using sales funnels. So, uh, the same process I walked you through in the beginning here, we really map out and figure out what market you're going to serve by aligning your passions and experiences. Uh, then we'll go into actually creating the offer and then launching the funnel itself. So we tackle it all inside of the free course. Um, and like I said, it hurts to give that away for free, but I do, um, uh, because that's what grows your audience. So we cover all of that. And then, um, it's just nicholasdodge.com forward slash free course. Uh, and that's where you can get access to it. Guys, remember it's Nicholas Dodge, not cage. It's just me. Who, <laughs> who say, I need an, I need an autograph, you know? <laughs> so it's Nicholas Dodge. 
<laughs> and I'll write that in the description. Okay, Beautiful. thank you so much. It was really awesome talking to you. I'm really happy, and definitely we have to sit and talk more about this because yeah. now you're making me a fan. You know, listening to this and um, <laughs> hearing it in a different way, uh, it makes me want to learn more you know and again as i told you especially Absolutely. that i'm also in the process of creating my offer so it's really interesting to listen to all the tips um and i hope that people are uh, people have enjoyed this and and at least found um a tip or two uh, that are like you know helpful and um i hope that people will like if you have any question or suggestion or if you need more details please let me know so that we can um have it in future episodes maybe we can discuss it with uh, nicholas to to give us like a brief uh, series you, you never you never know what <laughs> what options yeah. we can do <laughs> i'm Absolutely. becoming more comfortable with this you know so <laughs> perfect <laughs> yeah. yeah so thank you so much for your time it was really awesome talking to you and um um if you have, um, uh, if you guys have anything, please let me know. And uh, if you like the episode, please rate and uh, subscribe to it. And um, yeah, it would mean the world to me. Seriously, uh, thank you so much, Nicholas. And we'll we'll be talking to you very soon. Thank you. Absolutely, Reem. Thank you again for having me. It was awesome. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you liked today's episode, would you please take a minute to rate and review my show? That would mean the world to me. And let me know if you have any questions in mind or something that you're struggling with so I can cover in future episodes. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out. Let's accelerate your success together. And remember, success is not an accident. Success is a choice. See you next time.